Blog Talk Radio. Well, good evening. I'm Robert A. Wilson with Cowboy Wisdom, Visionary Vitality, and Cowboy Wisdom Radio. And tonight we're going to entertain and expand your life with Reverend Dr. Linda DeCoff. And without any further ado, I want to really get into this because there's something that was right at the top of this that's very dear and something that I speak a lot about is peace and enlightenment. How do they go hand in hand? Well, you can't have one without the other, can you? So light, um, when you think you must have light, uh, light in your heart, light in your mind, uh, light in your awareness to have peace. So they are uh, the more enlightened uh, an individual, our world becomes, the more peace will come forth because through the through the consciousness of light you know only love for instance can produce light right so so the emotional and thought content of our worlds uh have a result that they produce so when i have uh let's say when an individual has very heavy thinking or um, you know, is stepped out of a sense of unity, the brotherhood and sisterhood of all mankind, and stepped into some other state of separation, there is literally, from their mind and heart, the atmosphere gets dark. It gets permeated by the darkness of the thought and feeling, uh, so that when you have love in your heart, you know, you've seen people with a beautiful smile. They radiate something from the very essence of their being, and that brings you automatically a sense of peace. So there is, in order to smile, in order to be joyful, in order to to uh, create peace in the atmosphere around you, you must have light in your heart and light in your mind. And, uh, you know, the reason that human beings even be photographed is because we are magnetic, electromagnetic being. We are light in everything that we, and thus we can be captured, you know, through a photograph. So if, if it were, so life, light is life, light is love in action, and light is presence, and light is power. So with light, with more and more illumination, we can become the peace of God, you know, the imperturbability, the peace, uh, because we are related to the um, higher uh, dimensions of ourself. We're related to our divine self, our self that is cosmic, that is one with all, our higher self. So uh, it behooves us to get more light in our thought. And where else can you get this light than at the summit? You know, when you go up the mountain, uh, I love that you have the logo of a, a mountain and a horse. Nothing could be better. <laughs> so, you know, when when often I've gone, before I'm writing or whatever, I'll go up to the mountains and just take a walk up the mountain. And you know, every step, every level brings you a greater, wider, more expanded vista. And you know, as you, you scale up to the top, when you get to the summit, to the top, there you are looking out over everything from the high point of view, from the summit point of view, seeing things from an elevated point of view. So it is for us, you know, to come. The human being or the soul of the human being is one with God, is one with all that is, is whole, complete, and perfect. But on this plane of existence, we are, you know, bringing it out um, through the experiences that we have we are evolving, expanding, evolving uh, into that great awareness of the truth 
of our being, which is eternal, perfect love, light, all capacity, and so on, one with God, one with the great all in the all. So, and the 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 method of scaling up the mountain of being is through being willing to let go of attachment to all the limited thinking that we have you know living in a uh, like living in a small room thinking that i can't you know we can't do this we can't do that limitations feeling separate from our neighbor from people of different religions different races all this separation thought separates us from the that great life that life force that that power source that that divine source and so as we step more and more into unity and inclusiveness with all that exists realizing we are all one with that great all in the all life begins to become extremely empowered in a very natural non-force way you know you have to get to heaven through consciousness you understand what i'm saying rob it's got to be through conscious effort so the human being has the great and exalted capacity to realize in consciousness and in heart the unity that exists so we can step out it doesn't matter what kind of uh, what is going on now, what the conditions of anybody's life is, all of that has come to pass. And so once you've chosen and realized that, chosen the great goal to realize who you are in the infinite scheme of things and you desire to transcend and to find the way of transcendence, you will, and your very material life you know the the even the smallest concerns will be move so much uh, better and easier when one thinks of oneself as one with the all and not separate. So and have I said to you how you know how um, light is essential? Light is peace. And, and that's very true. But and 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 that's true. But how does that really start? Well, basically in the root chakra and come up, do you feel, Dr. Linda? Well, I think, you know, who who is to say, you know, for me, everybody's going to get there at some time. So no matter where a person is at, there has to be the desire to transcend. And, you know, lots of people think, well, if we'll, I let go of my old belief system and my my um, sense of myself as uh, separate, you know, I'm going to lose my identity and all this fear comes up. Whereas, really, the you become more individualized. The um, the more the more that you pursue your desire, and if you realize that. To desire to live the truth and to live the best you, which is your higher self, to to live this best you in the here and now, that desire is going to prosper you in every other department of life. So, if you, for instance, if a person wants to um, heal, there are various levels. There's the physical, emotional and mental level, right? So there are divine patterns that operate this universe, and the, and there are laws and principles that operate the entire universe of being harmoniously. So when the person thinks, begins to desire to change and to become that light that is within, always within, no matter how low the flame may be flickering it's there or you would not be breathing <laughs> and um so once the desire is there to improve one's life and then you realize that 
self-improvement, permanent self-improvement or advancement is accomplished by seeking spiritual truth because we are spiritual beings having this material experience and that is the the truth of the essence of our being. So if that is so, then by doing mental gyrations and trying to fix things through controlling and ch- you know, changing the chessboard around is not going to make it any different. It, it, it may tempor- temporarily appear to heal something, but it must things must be healed at the deepest um, the deepest spiritual level. And once they are healed, there is no more recurrence of the issues that have arisen that have prompted the individual to um, become better. So so on the mental plane, healing, <clears throat> since, you know, everything begins with a thought, before there was, you know, the Empire State Building, there was the idea of the Empire State Building. And then through a, you know, a series of, uh, events and actions, it was manifested in the the material or visible reality. So things always begin from within out. So mentally, you know, if you think, don't think of yourself, don't think of your problem, think of what is the divine pattern here? You know, what is the div- what does God or the infinite or whatever name you want to call it, think about itself. You know, it's said that the universe, Emerson, the great poet, says that the universe sits in smiling repose. What's the problem then? You know? So, and what could lead to such a state of peace and repose is that the the universe knows, mind knows, universal mind knows itself completely, knows that it is whole, complete, perfect, all capable. So when mind, uh, with our conscious minds, we the human being has the great capacity to consciously observe their own thoughts, right? Because we are a spiritual being. We are the thinker thinking. We are not the material mind. We are consciousness. So I can I can say to myself, you know, I I I can decide to notice when I'm getting into negativity, when I'm getting to separation, when I'm getting into limitation, all of which thought patterns will create their likeness in my life. So understanding that i am i am the creator where i am i want to only think in terms of the highest and the best and what is going to um bring whatever it is that i want to experience so i i can't think let's say wealth for example and and uh i can't desire wealth and think poverty you know, the universe is a poor place. I can't think that. I have to know that it is in a place of abundance. And there is not a spot where abundance is not. And so I step into that stream of thought. I is commensurate with what I want to experience. So we want to think the thoughts of God. We want to know for ourselves what God knows about itself. And there is no negative in that so that's on the mental plane so if we seek to know and to ask what is the divine i'm thinking this well that's what i'm feeling right now and it's habitual but is this really the truth what is the truth of being regardless regarding my situation that i'm working on so there must be willingness to self-question to, to see the model of divine mind out there, perfect, complete, and whole, and to know I am one with that, even if we're not feeling it at the moment. 
it, it you know you can still be honest and know that you're feeling upset or whatever you're feeling but it is important to to recognize it but not to get into it to recognize it and then to say but what is the truth of my being as one with the infinite regarding the situation so by the quality of thought emotions arise so i say you know i'm having a great day automatically my body is you know is regenerating every cell is joyful <laughs> you know a whole transformation happens in the instant we have a living pharmacy inside of us and then at the same time if i you know get into frustration or whatever feeling may be arising that also reads throughout my entire body as imbalance and uh, tension somewhere and so on. So everything proceeds from the quality of our thought about things. And if my main thought is, regardless of what I'm going through, I know that I am one with that which is whole, complete, and perfect, suddenly the doors of inspiration, intuition, the way to accomplish uh, comes comes forward to me because I'm literally courting divine mind. And what I'm connecting to, like plugging into the right electric cert, plugging a dim light or putting, replacing the light bulb and plugging it in, the light is suddenly bright. And life is flowing at a greater degree. So, you know, it, it begins, most people, we have to understand that the, men, the mental, our thought about things does establish like a trajectory of uh, thoughts and events. It also catalyzes emotions. So for the emotional body, we want to also ask ourselves, what is the divine pattern and of course, you know, we know that that's peace, bliss. And if anything knocks or we allow something or we knock ourselves out of the state of peace, we have slipped somehow into a feeling of separation from the main power line. You know, these things are are so powerful. And I, I can remember one time, you know, early on in, in my studies and so on, where I I was, you know, feeling sad about something, and somebody said to me, "Well, you're you're a child of God," you know, <laughs> and I couldn't even, you know, I couldn't even take that take that in. So it was a little later that I really understood what that is that I, I am one with this universe of being. And um, so emotionally, we want to observe, you know, and, and be aware, be willing, and realize that, that the ultimate state that one can be in, like the great yogis and the great masters and living at the summit, is continuous uh, peace, bliss, joy, courageousness, the higher range of the emotional scale, which is simply a range starting with apathy, which is all of the I can't and somebody else do it for me and so on. And as we climb up, you know, up the emotional scale, that same feeling converts to become creative power, courage, and all the divine, uh, val divine attributes. So we want to realize that that is the goal that we can get to. And then the other is physical. Well, if you're concentrating on, on you know, converting your emotions to be love, regardless of what is going on, I mean, there is, people don't do things to us. We respond habitually until we decide to make conscious choices that, I'm going to be in love because I want to be divine love in my life. So that means I've got to give up something, you know. <laughs> I've got to give up my favorite angers, fears, and so on. 
so that I'm always in love in the many names of love. And that requires um, detachment. It requires willingness. It requires the desire. And, you know, most of all, just to realize how wonderful it is. Because once these things have become your key goals, uh, you can never go back. You can never return to the old. And the old situations dissolve. So once we have performed these alignments with who we we really are in truth, mentally, emotionally, we immediately have physical results, physical within our own body and in our all of our manifest world. So whatever we're thinking is going to translate into our lives and you know, when I say life at the summit of being, we want to live at that summit all the time so that we can realize and also help others to realize who they are, to liberate them, free them. People suffer so much because they feel they're separate. They've been taught that they're separate from this wonderful power source they've been taught they're alone they feel alone <clears throat> but none of that is so no one you couldn't we cannot exist of ourselves we exist of the great cause that breathed us into being so when you realize that you are never alone divine love is the breath of your life. It brought you into being. It it operates your life. It, it, it will be there for any quest you have. Uh, it, is, it is just totally there to become whatever you need. Whether, you know, you're shopping for something and you need to find it, it will, you know, manifest it for you if you know that it will. And... It's like the substance becomes, the divine substance becomes whatever our, our, we need it to become for us when we are in the state of unity and of love. If somebody wants a perfect right relationship, uh, according to their definition of what perfect right relationship is, divine mind has it. So all one has to know is they are one with that mind and already all the powers and energy of the universe is conspiring to bring about your good for you in perfect right ways. And, you know, we hear the great mantras, before you asked, I heard. So this mind, this substance, this essence is always listening, always responding to us unless we shut the door. And still, and still, it is there, but it has, we, the human being has to have conscious recognition, conscious recognition of truth. We raise ourselves consciously. If we're thinking this is a universe of lack, is that the truth? No, it is not the truth. If we're thinking that we're separate, you know, our, some, our religion is better than another religion, is that true? No, it is not the truth. It, it's a, but we can, we can sit in a state of being and manifest from that level, like living in the basement, if we want to. Nobody's going to say, hey, wake up. But once a person is desiring to be awakened, they can go up the ladder to, you know, to the penthouse, to the summit, through conscious effort and being willing to let go of the lesser nature for the greater. You know, when, when I... Um, when I discovered that, it's so wonderful, you know, 
to manifest what no matter what it is it could be like a you know a, a real estate deal rent renting your place um getting a, a a you know a a job uh get finding the right uh treatment for a physical condition whatever it is it's so wonderful and so joyous to uh, to know that that which you need or require exists because the all in all exists even before you see it even before you come into contact to embark on your creative quest whatever it may be knowing that it already is and all i need to do is tune up to that realization to bring that to me or come in contact in perfect right ways. So, you know, we say, well, there is, if a person is needing something and needing a perfect right job, whatever that means, however that translates to the individual, at the same time, there is somebody who has that opening existing simultaneously Lee, who is seeking that person whatever i'm whatever a person is seeking is seeking them more so so this these are the thoughts of the great harmony of being that in fact exists when we are in a state of unity constructive unity with all that is so when you and then when that perfect job comes forth, you have that double realization, wow, you know, <laughs> isn't this wonderful? And so both both, both si- sides of the situation are blessed infinitely. You have such a sense of joy, which is so much more than, you know, muscling your way through something when when or trying to force something through yet to realize the great harmony and to know that translates very immediately into your life as perfect person condition right situation being there for you perfect income and so on the moment that you think of it it already exists for you so we're not then we are no longer we're living in that state of harmony and we're aware that, like a violin going out of tune, we're aware when you know those old thoughts come in, and we can just say, "Well, there they are." But I know the truth is, there I am thinking that again. There I am feeling that again. But I know the truth is, there is only love. There is only wholeness. There is only completeness. And. And so, what, and as I said, the great joy that comes, and joy is another manifestation of light, as is courage, as is peace, uh, are all the, you know, the developed attributes of the chakras, the will, the divine will, you know, and so all of these things are in us, and it's one way I think that's very good for people once you have the interest is to contemplate you know step outside of yourself because you're not going to find answers in old limiting conditions you can only find them by looking outside of your individual experience into the truth of what is so if you contemplate the virtues of the universe however you can, you know, uh, you will realize that it is peace, that it is divine order, and then you can contemplate that those qualities that you want to develop in yourself. And uh, and they will they will, um, as you contemplate them, you become one with them. You know, in the East or in many different religious uh, religious practices and in the ancient East, 
people, you know, persons contemplate a photograph of uh, a saint, of a, a a great guruji, and they, what are what are you doing, or you know, in, in, in what is happening? As you're contemplating those qualities, you they are awakening within you, and um, and be, and there is no way. By just turning the attention to the right place, so so there are many methods, uh, tools that you know the willingness to detach, as I said, to look outside oneself and to realize if one can succeed, all can succeed. If one can become total love, all can. You know there are no exceptions. Meditate on the qualities that you want to have, like divine peace. I am divine peace. I am courage. Follow up your I am statements with true statements of being. Be willing to give up notions of separation, realizing they only cause pain and restriction to the degree that you feel or claim yourself to be separate, even though you aren't, you will experience the restriction of the thought. And um, do, you know, do whatever you need to make sure moment by moment, you know, a good time is at night before you go to sleep, to um, harmonize with love, you know, review your situations of the day, where you went off track, where you yelled at somebody, where you got depressed, where you got disappointed, and release those. Find a way to be loved. You can forgive. You know, you can use whatever tools necessary. Forgiveness, blessing, faith in the midst of very trying circumstances. Choose, choose to feel, think the life-giving blessing thing that expands you and brings peace and well-being. And for the physical body, realize there is no, there is, the body is a manifestation of a configuration of light. So for the physical, we need to stop thinking of death. We say there is no death, decay, destruction. We rather think of the body as self-renewing every moment and and develop that permanent body pattern of light within you because behind the physical is the um is the divine pattern of that person the divine light pattern of that person so when we think in terms of light when we know ourselves every moment our are, are, you know, made anew by the quality of our thought. Our genes, in fact, are made anew. We are not stuck. So we don't want to think of an instrument that the divine created as being, you know, careening toward death and destruction. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, uh, it, you know, it takes a lot because a lot, you know, a lot the world thought is very hypnotic and tries to, you know, convince you at, you know, 50, you're going to need glasses, at 60, this can happen, at 70, this happens. And so, and so limitation creeps in there. So one wants to release all that and know that, you know, that I am the eternally self-renewing body. I am one with the body of God. I am one with the heart of God. And healing then will come so rapidly. And, you know, people will shed physical problems that they have had. Because behind everything is the great harmonic, the great manifestation of the divine pattern of light. So I would say that, you know, all truth points to life. If it doesn't add unto life, love, joy, then it, it's not a 
a thought of truth. It's not a feeling of truth. Uh, you know, we've given our power away somehow and st- and moved into a state of separation. So, you know, we want to strive to contemplate those qualities of universal perfect being, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and to know that these are the truth of us, and no matter what has taken place, all that has come to pass, and through desire to shift up and, you know, to Im- improve one's own state of being, you know, all the ways and means will open up. And Dr. Linda's website is http newthoughtinternational.com. Yes, and, and uh, uh, a very important website is um, the http colon slash slash rev, R-E-V, D-R, Linda Decoff, dot com. And you can find a, a, a Rev Dr. Linda Decoff, D-E-C-O-F-F dot com. And on that site, there's loads of information about my books and about um, there's ongoing um, series on divine prosperity, on healing, um, which people can access and they can learn also a lot about my books from there. So that's a, a very, very good site. All right. Thank you, Dr. Linda, and we'll be here next Tuesday night. And so you give them some wisdom to go, and I'll close out the show. Okay. Thank you, Rob. And all right, everybody, and good night, and everybody have a good weekend.